Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. I'm Smith and today we're discussing the 2024 Old Age Security OAS and Guaranteed Income Supplement GI's pension payments, which affect millions of Canadians. Let's start with exciting news. Justin Trudeau recently approved maximum benefit increases for the OAS and GI programs. This decision will greatly affect Canada's seniors' finances. However, before we discuss this announcement, understanding the background of these critical programs is crucial. The Old Age Security Program has underpinned Canada's retirement income system since 1952. Over the decades, the OAS has grown into one of Canada's largest public pension schemes to support the country's aging population. The Guaranteed Income Supplement was launched in 1967 to help low-income seniors together with the OAS. These two programs provide a vital safety net for older Canadians in retirement. Let's analyze the announcement and its implications for Canadian elders in 2024. The Trudeau administration has approved the maximum OAs and GI benefit increase. This decision is due to rising inflation and senior living costs. Let's analyze these increases. This is a 25% rise from 2023 for old age security OAs. These changes are especially important for low income seniors who depend on this supplement. These increases go beyond numbers. They improve millions of Canadian seniors' lives. Let's hear from professionals to better comprehend the impact. A top financial guru says, the approval of these maximum increases is a positive move. Many elderly struggle with fixed earnings due to inflation. OAS and GI supplements will also bring much needed relief. While there's always more to do, this is a great trend, says a prominent senior advocate. It shows that the government is listening to senior Canadians and addressing their financial issues. You may question how these gains relate to previous years and why their maximum increases. Based on CPI increases, OAS and GI benefits are modified quarterly. Indexation keeps these benefits purchasing power up to date with inflation. In periods of high inflation, like now, the government can sanction rises beyond indexation. That's happening with this 2024 declaration. To illustrate, let's look at OAS and GI rises over the past five years. The government's response to the economy is evident in the 2024 increase, which is much bigger than in previous years. Let's answer some typical queries about these adjustments. First, who gets these higher benefits? OAS eligibility remains 65 or older and residency-based. GI eligibility depends on OAS and income. Note that individuals receiving the maximum benefit will receive the full increase, while others may receive prorated increases. Do you need to request these raises? If you receive OAS and GIs, the increases will be automatic. If you're not receiving these benefits but think you qualify, apply immediately. How will these hikes affect your other benefits? Other federal payments should not be affected by OAS and GI hikes. As always, consult a financial advisor or benefits professional about your situation. Finally, are these increases permanent? Indeed, these new benefit thresholds will guide future indexation. Benefits are still income tested and may be clawbacked for higher income seniors. Let's analyze some hypothetical scenarios to demonstrate these benefit increases' real-world impacts. These are simplified examples conditions may vary. Maria is a 70-year-old retiree living alone in a modest apartment. Her income is the maximum OAS and GI benefits. This extra money could help Maria buy better groceries or pay rising electricity. Next, 68-year-old John and Sarah have a mixed income. Incorporating GIs and partial OS. Due to their additional income, OS payments may rise less than GEIs. The increased money could help John and Sarah pay for rising drug costs. Finally, imagine 72-year-old Robert who has OAA, a solid pension, and investments. Robert's OAS payout will grow, but the recovery tax clawback may reduce the benefit. The larger OAS amount may counterbalance inflation's influence on Robert's retirement income. These scenarios show how benefit increases might vary by situation. It highlights the complexity of retirement income planning and the need of understanding how income sources interact. The approval of these maximum hikes comes amid economic turmoil. Look at some of the variables that affected this decision. The main issue is inflation. Recent inflation has been strong in Canada and other nations. These factors have strained fixed incomes, especially for elderly. To help elders keep purchasing power, benefits were increased. The cost of living also matters. Housing, food, and healthcare costs have risen significantly. These rising prices disproportionately burden elderly. How many on fixed incomes? OAS and GS boosts should help mitigate these higher costs. Economic recovery is another factor. As Canada recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic, bolstering seniors' incomes can boost local economies. Benefits may boost consumer spending and economic growth. Also important are demographic changes. Canada's aging population. Having an increasing elderly population. This demographic transition strains pensions and health care. 
the benefit increases reflect the increased necessity of senior support. Understanding this economic environment helps us understand pension policy's complexity, supporting seniors, and being fiscally responsible is a tricky line. While every country supports its seniors differently, comparing Canada's system to others can be enlightening. Social Security in the U.S. resembles OAA's U.S. has no direct comparable to GI's. Canada has lower elderly poverty rates than OAA's, but Social Security benefits are higher. The U.K.'s state pension is contribution-based, unlike Canada's residence-based OAA's. Uh, the U.K. gives a pension credit for low-income seniors like the GI's. Canada has improved pension plans, whereas the U.K. has simplified theirs. Australian age pensions are means-tested and resemble OAS and GI's. In contrast to Canada's optional CPP, they have an obligatory superannuation private pension scheme. Australia's strategy generates lower public pension expenditures but higher private pension savings. Scandinavian countries like Sweden and Denmark enjoy large public pensions. Their pensions usually include earnings-related benefits. They also have greater taxes to fund these more extensive systems. This worldwide viewpoint indicates that while Canada's system has merits, we can always learn and improve by studying other countries' approaches. The announcement of maximum benefit increases has been broadly welcomed, but obstacles remain. Some believe that OS and GS benefits are still insufficient to pay basic living expenditures in many parts of Canada, notwithstanding the increases. Benefits are identical nationwide, but living costs vary widely. OA clawback is a difficult subject for some wealthy seniors. Critics say it discourages saving and penalizes retirees who prepared well. Supporters argue it targets benefits to the needy, with elderly people. OA and GI programs' long-term viability is debated. Some advocate for basic system adjustments to benefit future seniors. OAs and GIs are comprehensive, however, some seniors are missed. This includes immigrant seniors without residency and those with convoluted job histories. The intricate relationship between OAs, GIs, and their income streams can discourage saving and working. To help elders understand and organize their finances, some propose simplifying the system. These problems remind us that while the present increases are excellent, more needs to be done to support Canadian seniors. There are ways to maximize OS and GS benefits for seniors. Check the Government of Canada website to stay informed of program changes. Create a My Service Canada account to manage your benefits online. Strategize your income. Consider how other income affects OS and GIs. Consult a financial counselor to maximize retirement income. Complete applications on time. If you're approaching 65, apply for OAS early. Remember that you can defer OAS for five years for a larger monthly payment. Report modifications ASAP. Report income or living circumstance changes to Service Canada immediately to avoid overpayments or underpayments or underpayments. Finally, research provincial programs. Many provinces offer senior benefits. Look into provincial supplements to federal benefits. The future of Canada's pension system is worth examining. Digital tools and online pension benefit management services are coming. AI and data analytics may help foresee pension demands and customize support. As conversations continue about possible reforms, such as raising the OA's qualifying age, pension and social support programs may be better integrated. Pension funds like the CPP Investment Board are increasingly considering environmental, social and governance ESG aspects in their investment decisions. Pensions may need to change with job trends. As the gig economy and non-traditional employment grow, pension systems may need to adapt to support these individuals in retirement. Finally, pension portability agreements may increase as careerists travel between countries. Pension policy will need to change to fulfill Canadian society's needs in the future. Traditional retirement ideas may need revisiting. As many people work part-time or pursue encore jobs in retirement, flexible pension systems for different job and lifestyles may become more relevant. Pension policy's relationship to health care and housing is equally important. To achieve retirement financial stability, seniors' requirements and expenses may need to be considered holistically. Certainly. Let's examine other parts of OAS and GIs increases and their effects on Canadian elders and society. These pension increases affect more than simply beneficiaries. Ripples affect numerous economic sectors in society. Increased elder income frequently leads to higher consumer expenditure in health care, recreation, and personal care. This could boost local economies, especially in retiree heavy areas. Additionally, these improvements may reduce the financial strain on younger family members who support aging relatives. Seniors may need less help from their children and grandchildren with stronger pension benefits, allowing them to focus on their financial objectives and retirement preparation. It's also important considering housing market effects. In cities with rising rents and property values, many elderly struggle with housing costs, 